the QS performance parameters, which are supposed to be the performance matrix, which are measurable, actually determine how the service is going to be provisioned from a service provider to the end user. So we are going to discuss it from the protocols perspective. Then we are actually going to look at the performance parameters and see how different IP traffic classes are influenced or affected by these performance parameters. The protocols being central to the implementation of the NGN architecture for service provisioning uh, are very important. When we are talking about IP based uh, network uh, services and an all IP environment, we are talking about the protocols which work with IP above and below. Uh, so at the lower layer, we are expecting some kind of connectionless and connection oriented services like Ethernet, ATM, SDH, PDH, Wi-Fi, uh, that is 802.11 ETC. At the higher layer, we are expecting the um, application layer services like RTP, RTSP, RTCP, uh, session initiation protocol. And at the transport layer, we have TCP, UDP, or sometimes uh, neither of them. So if that is the case, we can say that uh, these protocols are going to have an, a final um, role in determining how the QS is actually provided. If you look at this diagram, uh, we have an all IP environment. Uh, we have end to end scenario where we have the service provider and we have the service seeker in a source destination situation. You can see that at the higher layer, there are so many protocols which affect, which use IP and uh, which affect the behavior of IP. Likewise, the data link layer protocols also determine how this IP packet which is an hourglass model is affected in terms of service provisioning. So from the pure IP perspective, there are certain parameters which define exactly how a QoS class can be provisioned services. The first one is the IP packet transfer delay. It is actually the difference in the occurrence of two transmission events because one transmission event is followed by the second transmission activity. So this packet transfer is a measure that can be given any form. For instance, it's an average transfer delay, the max transfer delay, minimum transfer delay, or the median transfer delay. So this is very important because uh, from the network perspective, each intermediate device such as a router or a switch is processing an IP packet. Once this delay is there, then any variation in it might cause jitter. So this is actually the difference between one way delay of IP packet and it is compared to the reference uh, IP packet transfer delay, uh, which, which can vary of course, but uh, there is some kind of guideline on how to choose the reference IPTD. So whenever this IPTD is, uh, is, is deviated, then depending upon the standard deviation or variance, uh, this uh, IP uh, packet delay variation can be computed. It's another very important uh, parameter. Then we have the packet error ratio. It is the total number of packets which are either uh, uh, corrupted or lost. Because if you recall, in the IP header, there is checksum that determines the erroneous or corrupted packet which is discarded by a router or an end host. Then we have the packet loss ratio that is a packet that is uh, processed by a router sent to another router but is never received or it is dropped at the input queue of a, uh, of, of a router buffer. So this is actually another interesting perspective on the um, total capability of a network to deliver certain number of packets. This in turn requires some additional information on the overall capability of the network in terms of bandwidth, in terms of the uh, buffer available to every router, etc. So uh, the IP traffic that is carried on could be, we are, we are talking about uh, QS requiring IP traffic. So uh, there are QS classes 
which are based on the IPTD, IPDV and uh, uh, error and loss ratios. So you see we have different classes. For these eight classes, in fact, class five is not specified and class six and seven are uh, quite ambitious. So they are not offered by different uh, service providers. But for the first few classes, that is uh, from class zero to uh, class one, uh, we can look at them from their usability point of view. So class zero and one are for real time delay and jitter sensitive applications. So most jitter sensitive applications are sent on to class zero and one. Specifically class zero being the best, it is for, it is highly suited for high interaction applications such as uh, voice over IP because it has very low bound on IPTD. Uh, class two and three are targeted for transactional data, again interactive, but having relatively more IPTD. Uh, for instance, um, uh, class two suits the signaling traffic um, and class three is for interactive applications. Now class four relatively has uh, uh, more IPTD. So it is for short transactions, which are again live, uh, but uh, not requiring much uh, jitter sensitivity. And video streaming is another interesting application of class four IP uh, traffic class. 